also be laying out what the plan is, what the current problems are in the status quo, and what the world looks like now, as well as why he thinks that the plan will solve that particular problem. So after he speaks, there'll be time for cross-examination, and we'll talk a little bit about what the plan was and maybe some residual questions we have from that. Uh, am I starting or are we ready? <clears throat> I'm good to go whenever you are. Um, oh, okay. Just let me know. Sure, I'm ready. Hi, my name is Joshua Nixon. I'll be representing the Boston Debate League on the half of the affirmative. I'll be going over the status quo, what's happening now, harms, direct result, um, consequences of what's happening now. I'm going to present a plan, and then I'll present a solvency, which is how the plan solves for all the problems that we stated before. Currently, the U.S. cybersecurity is not prepared to stop attacks. Marks and Schaefer, 22. We've become more vulnerable with each passing day, warned Lauren Zybrick, who is in charge of the cyber project at Harvard. One big problem, according to experts, is that the U.S. is more like more, using more technology, which means that hackers have more targets to aim at. People are making new technology very quickly without worrying enough about how to keep it safe. Essentially, with the advent of using cell phones and other technological devices, whether it's a smart refrigerator, um, these devices are being made faster than a rate that we can protect them, essentially. Hackers have broken into real news sites and posted fake news. Greenberg 20. Russia has started hacking real news websites. They post fake articles with dangerous information and those articles spread quickly on social media before the news websites take them down. They've posted fake stories in many places that get a lot of attention. They're spreading these stories that NATO is a danger, that they resent the locals, that they're infected, that they're car thieves, says one cybersecurity expert at a company called FireEye. The cybersecurity companies like FireEye do not know exactly how the hackers are able to post news on real websites, which is obviously a big problem because most people get their news, their information of the world from um, websites that they deem credible. But if we're putting false information with um, a credible name, even if it's gone away, people will still have that imprint on their brain that this thing happened and this credible source said so. Why it's a problem. Russian hackers and fake news got Trump elected, Mayor 18. It is likely that Russian hacking changed the results of the presidential election, according to Kathleen Hall Jamison, a professor at University of Pennsylvania. Changing the results of an election does not require adding fake votes in voting machines. You can affect people who change their decision. Essentially, um, Russia was using fake news to sway people's hearts to vote for Trump, and that's what got Trump elected. Also, Trump supporters became dangerous when he was president, and they are still dangerous, Kelper 22. Police and FBI agents are being threatened by Donald Trump supporters who are upset about his home being searched. Experts who study how people react to fake information say that these threats come from people who still believe that Donald Trump won the election in 2020. When there's a whole lot of fake news that makes people angrily online, people start to be violent in the real world. Oh, I didn't even get to the plan. The plan, the United States federal government should work with NATO to improve cybersecurity by sharing information, spending more money, and setting up ways for countries to work together to stop cyber attacks. And this solves in a few ways. Um, NATO can help prevent cyber attacks. Rusi, Sorelius 2020, they can set up easy ways to share um, information about cyber attack, spend at least a billion dollars to improve defense, and set, and set up teams of people in NATO countries who respond to cyber attacks. Um, so that's time. I I didn't include your roadmap, Josh. So technically, oh yeah, oh I, I in my world. Are. So it's okay. You you weren't that far over. But um, Josh was great. He flagged a problem you might have. Um, make sure to read your plan text. That's very important. Otherwise, no one will know what you're actually advocating for. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, we will open the floor for Ariella, who's our two N, to cross X Josh. Okay, so are we starting the timer? Okay, my first question is, um, are there other stories, like, is it just Russia that's making fake news spread so much in the United States? It may, Russia 
is responsible for spreading the most damaging news throughout the United States, even if it's not the most. Okay, and where in your cards does it say that? Oh, that's a very good question that I will have to get back to you later. Okay, and um, currently the U.S. is already working with NATO to strengthen cybersecurity. Um, So why does the inherency kind of matter then? Why is the fact that Russia is spreading fake news in the United States matter if we're already strengthening our cybersecurity? Well, at the rate at which we are probably we are increasing our cybersecurity, it's nowhere near to the demand of the the technological vectors that other places uh, that hackers can attack. A and B, the if U.S. is a superpower and we you know, are looked up to by the rest of the world, having us be attacked and look weak is bad for the world. Okay, sure. So a lot of the evidence that you're talking about is from when Trump got elected and how Mm -hmm. that influenced the election in 2016. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the cooperation that, you know, U.S. is working with NATO now, you know, currently Mm -hmm. 2022. So What recent evidence do you have that would say that we still need to strengthen our cybersecurity? The evidence is in the fact that there are these attacks that have gone unaddressed that have caused real life damage. And also, um, even though we do want to protect the un- United States, um, it can be helpful in dealing with, you know, attacks uh, in other places as well, in other Na- NATO countries as well that are close to Russia that are launching these attacks. Okay. And, um, uh, Ariel, that's time. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was our first round of process. So, um, I'll briefly go over, you know, what we covered in the one AC, just so everyone's, you know, on the same page. So we talked a little bit about why U.S. You know, cybersecurity right now isn't ready to stop any attacks and that hackers have actually broken into real news sites and posted fake news. All right. And then those hackers and some Russian hackers actually are responsible for Trump being elected. Um, And that Trump is actually a dangerous person in office. Um, And, you know, Josh then read our plan text, which was to improve cybersecurity by cooperating with NATO and why NATO, and he explained a little bit why NATO actually has the abilities to help the US improve their cybersecurity. So that's a general overview. Um, And like Roger is saying, please, please, put questions, thoughts, comments, yes. concerns, relevant, relevant to the debate, please, in the chat. Um, and I'll do our, my best to, to answer them and help um, any way I can. Um, but now it's time for the one and see. Um, Walter, do you need any prep time? Um, no, I, I should be good to get right into it. Okay, an expert debater, Walter is, so no prepping taken. Um, and Walter um, will be responding um, to the case and outlining some issues with it. Yeah, so uh, should I? Whenever you're oh, good, yeah, so the timer. So. Okay, I'll just give a quick roadmap. Um, I'm just going to be first off talking about uh, an alternative cause, something else that might be causing the problem separate from what uh, what Josh was talking about. Then I'm going to be talking about uh, why the, there might actually not be a problem currently. And then I'll be saying that, you know, if there were a problem, uh, that the plan that they outlined can't actually solve it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm at the very end of recovering from a cold, but I should be all right. Um, anyway, uh, let me just get a timer. All righty. <clears throat> okay, first is the alt cause, which is local outrage. Stories that make people mad spread the most quickly on social media, even if they aren't true. And these stories aren't always from Russia. That's Stuart in 20. Uh, social media is causing more people to disagree about basic facts. People only see articles with arguments that they already agree with. Uh, they continue to read these articles, even if they're fake, until they believe that they're true. Uh, stories that make people mad spread the most quickly on social media. Social media companies encourage this because they know that people are more likely to keep reading news on their site if it makes them mad. Stories that make people mad most often contain fake news and lies about basic facts. Local news also creates and shares fake news. Facebook has made some changes to try and stop fake news 
information is, but they recently decided to get rid of those changes and go back to the original formula uh, that that allowed fake news to spread more quickly. Next is the no inherency response to what's happening now. Cooperation already. Uh, the U.S. is already working with NATO on cybersecurity. That's a uh, health or Heath in twenty one. Uh, President Joe Biden made it clear uh, what he believes in a recent speech. I believe with every ounce of my being that democracy must prevail. Biden said Donald Trump tried to stop working with many countries during his presidency, including the, those in NATO, because he preferred for the U.S. to do things alone. Joe Biden made it clear that he plans to work with NATO and will protect other countries that are in NATO if they're attacked, and unlike the former president. Joe Biden argued that only a strong alliance with NATO will contain Russia. It's so much easier for the Kremlin to bully and threaten individual states than a strong and united transatlantic community, Biden said. Next, uh, response to what's happening now, collaboration is failing. Uh, NATO is actually already prepared to fight cyber attacks. That's Balder in 18. NATO leader Jens Stolenberg said NATO already has strong cybersecurity. NATO is ready to respond to cyber attacks against any of its countries. The U.S. has been preparing against cyber attacks for a long time. Uh, it is particularly focused on the past and future cyber attacks from Russia and China. The U.S. already knows that Russia has been has used fake news to try and convince Americans that lies are true and encourage people to vote for certain politicians. Uh, the U.S. and NATO are already working together on cybersecurity plans if, it's, if an attack does happen. I'll cut that there. Uh, solvency plan won't solve the problem. NATO policy is unclear. NATO might actually not choose to respond to a cyber, might actually choose to not respond to a cyber attack. That's Alman, Meyer, and Raji in 22. Uh, NATO continues to update its policy on how to respond to cyber attacks, and it's not clear uh, that NATO is prepared to respond to a cyber attack or that it will want to respond more particularly. NATO will not talk about how serious an attack would have been or how to respond. NATO leaders choose not to define what kind of cyber attacks they would respond to because they don't want to encourage people to make cyber attacks that they know NATO won't respond to, and it and NATO hopes that not having a clear policy will make attacks less likely. Uh, the plan won't so, next. The plan won't solve the problem. Of physical threats only. NATO is only likely to respond to cyber attacks that cause physical damage or death, not things like fake news. Alan Meyer and Raji in twenty two. James Andrew Lewis, a military strategy expert, said NATO has already done a pretty good job figuring out what their response would be to a particularly significant cyber attack. There would have to be some equivalence with a physical attack. Lewis also explained that at least one country. And NATO said it would ha- it would only agree to respond to a cyber attack that attack caused if that attack caused physical That's damage true. or many injuries. Yeah, we'll stop right there. Okay. Um, so now we'll be heading into cross sex of Walter's speech, which was the one in C. Um, and Josh will be cross sexing Walter. And I know sometimes it's confusing to figure out who's cross-sexing who and when, but an easy trick to remember is the person who gave the speech before this one is the one usually asking questions. So they're done. They're, they're done with their speech. They're more relaxed. So they're more easily able to ask questions. So I'll start the timer whenever you start asking questions, Josh. All righty. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Also, for you, for, you, for you debaters out there, make sure you get some questions in here, please. Like, I would love to ask your questions as opposed to asking mine. I promise. All right. Um, in the meantime, in between time, uh, can you explain your NATO won't respond to cyber attacks card again, please? Um, yes, I may. So is that the... Um... Uh, it was the, I think it was the 18 card. Yeah. Or, yeah, NATO policy unclear. Or, uh, I might not choose the the uh, element the tw- the Raji twenty two card. Sorry, got you. Um, yeah. So the idea is that um, there's a lot of qualifications that NATO has to meet for their for them to actually respond to a cyber attack, uh, mm-hmm. and they actually don't ever like they don't list publicly what those qualifications would be. So we have no way of knowing if NATO would actually be triggered to respond to a cyber attack uh, that would happen at all. Uh, because there's no policy that they've written out and made public that says yeah. if a, a fake news attack were to happen, we're going right. to somehow. Yeah. Thank you very much. And um, uh, just another clarifying question yeah. about the, the U.S. working with NATO now, the 21 card, sure. um, 21. Uh, can you explain that one in a bit more detail as to how uh, NATO is working with the U.S. on um, cybersecurity specifically? Yeah, so... Uh, it's not in this card particularly, but we can tack something on in the in the two to go into a little bit more detail. Um, but the I, I believe the most recent like security cooperation form that they you know put out um, outlines like work with 
the United States on like funding for cybersecurity, things like that. Oh, okay. And then the this um all local outrage. Yeah. Um it, it, that can you explain that one again too, please? Yeah. So the idea with local outrage is that we're saying that a lot like social media companies have a vested interest in spreading fake news that will make people angry um, because it keeps people on their site and continues making them money. So it's so they, irrelevant okay. of Russian fake news. People will listen to fake news whenever and your harms will still be incurred whether or not we stop Russian attacks. All right. Um, any questions out there for the chat? This is your time. Want this to be as interactive as possible. Kelly, how much time do I have left? Is that time? Yeah, that's time. So while All we're right. waiting on maybe maybe a potential question, um, but no pressure, um, I'm going to briefly go through the arguments that were made in the one and see. This will be the last time I do this comprehensively, but just so we're all on the same starting page for the first few speeches. So the first argument is about. Um, alternate causes and that news um, that makes people angry actually spreads the most quickly and news services are incentivized to, to have those news uh, articles even if they're fake. Uh, the next argument is that cooperation is already happening right now. The United States is already working with NATO. The next argument is that right now NATO is already prepared to fight some cyber attacks. Um, the next argument is that the plan won't actually solve the problem because NATO's policy on when they'll actually intervene and help is pretty unclear. Um, and the last argument that was made is that the plan won't solve the problem because NATO will only intervene if there's an actual physical problem. So um, I see some, some compliments sh shouting out our, our fellow team members. Um, so good, good job. Keep it up. No pressure, Roger and Ariella. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Um, we have one more question, which we can get to, and then um, I think we should go ahead and move into the TOC, uh, the TOC, yeah, the 2AC. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> debate brain. <laughs> um, so, uh, the negative side that we're already working with NATO. So, what's the harm of continuing to work with the alliance and use our resources to our advantages? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's for me. Yes. Oh, they're asking me? Oh, man, that was supposed to be helping me, not trying to throw me under the <laughs> bus. What is this? Okay, well, maybe some food for thought for later. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> right, Y'all just trying to throw the deck at me. I see how it is. Okay, so leading into the 2AC, right? So this will be Roger. He'll be given the 2AC. In an ideal world, he'll, you know, extend some of his case and what he hopes to solve. He'll maybe go through and answer some of the arguments that Walter ever so eloquently introduced in his 1 and C. Um, and we'll see what else he does. So, Roger, do you need any prep time? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just edit the spotlight for your slightly. Oh, yeah, sorry. I can do it. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> also, um, we enc I encourage you to advocate for yourself throughout um, your debates. So if you do need some extra prep time or you want to work with the judge in the back of the room to give you time cues to like every 30, like when you have 30 seconds left or something, would highly recommend. Um, I'm not really doing that very well with my, my coworkers and Ariel and Walter, but. <laughs> it may be a little hard to see here, but I'm, I'm following this debate and I've, I've written Josh's arguments down in my first column and Walter is down in my second column. And as Walter is giving his speech, I was writing my responses to those as we went, as well as the page number of the evidence that I'm going to be reading uh, to make my responses. So I'm going to be responding to Walter's arguments about how we're already working with NATO um, and alternate causes for harms uh, related to fake news. And then finally about the fact that uh, NATO may not be attacking. So I'll do concurrency and then harms and then solvency. All right, I'm gonna start the timer, here we go. So the negative tries to make this argument that we're already working with NATO and we don't need to do any more. The plan's calling for us to work with NATO and that's just insufficient according to the affirmative, right? Think about it like this, right? If your parents offer you like a really crappy lunch and they're like, ah, well, you don't need a, you don't need good food. We already gave you lunch, right? Like you and you're responding to them, you're like, I want better food. I want, you know, work, you know, I want better food. 
And they say, no, you, you're already, you already ate yesterday. You ate yesterday. You don't need more food today. That's what's happening with NATO in the United States right now, right? Yes, we work with NATO currently, but we're not getting uh, what we need from cybersecurity from NATO. So on page eight, uh, there are a few ways that NATO can help prevent cyber attacks according to Rusi and Surrealist 2022. Number one are, says set up a way to easily share information about cyber attacks. And number two says spend a billion dollars to improve cybersecurity. So that's a major way that NATO and the US can work better together. NATO can spend a billion dollars more than they're currently spending. That's a big difference than what's currently happening now. All right. There was also a question about how the plan would work. Well, I'm gonna to point to page 14, which is Dolan 22. And it says, NATO can help its 30 countries to work together on cybersecurity, right? NATO updated its main defensive plans in 2022. We are recognizing these plans are updated recently. Yes, we are already working with NATO, but it has now, it now has stronger cybersecurity technology that's made it easier. And we still need to make plans to help countries to respond to cyber attacks and share data and information. Yes, we're already working together. We're not spending enough money. We're not sharing enough data. We don't have good enough plans to respond to cyber attacks. They also have a point about local um, news and social media sharing fake news. Well, the fact is this fake news comes from somewhere. A lot of no local news outlets and social media platforms aren't making up fake news. They're only giving it a larger voice and amplifying fake news. Russia is creating a lot of this fake news. Local media, social media, they're just sharing fake news that's already out there, right? Page 10, Ling22 says, Russia can make and share tons of fake news about many topics. All right, cut the card of topics. Social media is just sharing the information that already exists, not creating it. If we stop Russia from creating and sharing fake news to begin with, that's going to stop the problem at its source. Finally, um, NATO said they're only going to respond to physical attacks. Well, we've already demonstrated that fake news can lead to physical attacks on page seven. Klepper 22 said there were 10 times as many mentions of people who support another civil war after Trump's home was searched by the FBI. That sounds like a physical attack to me if I've ever heard one, a civil war. Okay. The heat of the debate round is heating up. <laughs> um, and now uh, Walter will be cross-hexing Roger. Alrighty. And Walter, I think we have some questions in the chat. So if you don't mind um, pulling from there, if there are any relevant ones. Sure. Um, I have questions. Um, yeah, I think they just ask questions to the negative. So maybe they could be asked against Ariella next time. <laughs> um, all right. Let me just cut this. All right. All right, and starting the question now. Okay, so the last thing you said in your speech said like the people calling for, like Trump supporters calling for civil war sounds like a physical threat to you um, or like a, a, a physical attack. Um, is there a civil war currently in the United yeah. States? Okay. Um, and so if there's not current, violence how would that would it, it well okay how is that a cyber attack how is a, a trump supporter who may have been inspired by fake news calling for civil war uh potential violence that is the direct result of fake news how is that not just the agency of that supporter it is the agency of, of the supporter, but I, I would argue that because they're inspired by the fake news to violence, we should stop the fake news as, at its source to try and reduce the likelihood of physical violence. All right. Well, then, I mean, I agree. Maybe we should stop it. But the question is not 
whether we should, it's more rather would NATO. So do you have anything that said that NATO would actually see something like this, like someone who read fake news making a threat as injury caused by a cyber attack? Yeah, I, I think I would argue that um, in its current, in the, in the status quo, what's currently happening, uh, NATO would not respond to, you know, a threat online. Okay. Um, yeah. So then uh, how are any of your harms valid? How could they be solved by the plan if none of them would actually be responded to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of our plan is about setting up systems to prevent fake news from being shared and ultimately preventing violence. I think people could get on board with the idea of preventing violence. Hmm. Um, you know, but I, I, I certainly agree they're not there yet. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Alrighty. So, um, actually, I'm going to keep you, you and Roger and Walter, I'm going to keep you up here with me on the spotlight because I feel weird being the only one whose face is like projected large. Anyway, um, so um, I do want to um, compliment Walter and Roger and everyone who else who has already done cross X because this has been a theme throughout. Everyone you can see is like very firm and holding their point, but they're also very like kind and nice to one another as you should also be during cross X. Um, but they're also still making their points known and being very persuasive, which is great. So right now we're going to have a little bit of prep time to lead into the 2NC. Um, and I'm going to briefly share my screen to, am I sharing my flow? Good, excellent. Okay, <laughs> so right now you can see this is my flow and I've divided the columns into all of our speeches and I've been trying to, you know, match up any arguments that were made and answered in the same area, um, which is a skill that has taken me many years to perfect and is still under construction. So it's completely okay if your flow does not look like this. But I've also color coded everything to make it easier to see. So the blue is the ass and the orange is the neg. And you can see this next speech that we're prepping for, right, is the 2NC, which Ariel will be giving. And then something that's special about this speech is not only is it the last speech that gets cross-sexed, right, but it's also the only speech that has a speech on the same side going right after it. So you can see we have the 2NC and then we have the 1NR. So we call this special fancy thing when the two speeches are right next to each other, the neg block. And typically it's very helpful and strategic for the negative to do a thing that's called splitting the block. And literally all that means is uh, it's smart to take different arguments in the 2NC and different arguments again in the 1NR. And um, it's just so you're not repetitive, you're not saying the exact same thing your partner said, you have a diversity in arguments and it also gives you the opportunity to expand upon those arguments more in depth since you're not trying to cover as much. It's a very strategic tool that the negative is gifted because if you look at my fancy schmancy spreadsheet, <laughs> um, the affirmative gets the first and last speech. So this is one strategic way that the negative can make up for that disadvantage. Um, anyway, I will stop <laughs> forcibly showing you my flow. Um, I don't think we have any other questions right now or anything like that. Ariel, do you need any more prep time? No, I do not. Okay, great. Let me just pull up my timer. Okay, I'm going to need a second to do the, the spotlight. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if I could get any more light in here. But just... Hi, my name is Ariella Taylor, and I'm also here debating for the Boston Debate League, just on the neg. Um, and I am going to be addressing all of the arguments on social media and the spread of fake news. I will be adding on to my partner's argument about um, alt causes to the spread of fake news, reading from pages 18 through 20. Oh, sorry, through 21. And I will start now. 
Other causes, social media and journalists. Social media's control over news and allowing threats against journalists are big problems, Burns 22. Journalists say that social media is hurting the way that news is shared. Journalists believe that too many people only see one side of a story, and that is because social media encourages people to read news and arguments that they already agree with. Some other problems with social media are journalists in and journalists include 80% of journalists are attacked in writing on social media for what they write. 86.5% of journalists said social media companies have too much control over the mix of news people see. And 94.3% of journalists blame social media for spreading inaccurate news. So this card is basically saying that um, journalists are noticing that social media companies have a very large control over the way that news is spread and that when they do try to share um, um, a less skewed side of the story, they get attacked for, the, uh, for what they're writing. Um, and now other causes, bad sources. People are getting fake news on social media from many different bad sources, not just from Russian hackers. That's Stuart 20. Websites that provide unreliable news became more popular on social media this year. Unreliable news sources are often ones that um, most people, that are often post information that is proven to be false. In 2019, 8% of news people read from the 100 biggest news sources on social media was false. In 2020, the amount of fake news people read from the 100 biggest sources increased to 17%. People are seeing more news that contains lies or information that is created to make people believe certain things. Social media and the internet have tons of fake news and it's often difficult for people to tell what is real and what is fake. Cut the card at fake. And there is no problem. Voter, voter turnout. Even though some people are trying to prevent people of color from voting, more people of color, more young people are voting. That's Frey 21. Young adults voted more in 2020 than in any election so far in this century. For the first time in a presidential election, white voters with college without college degrees make up less than 40% of voters. This is very different from 2004 when white voters without college degrees made up more than 50% of the voters and only 20% percent of the voters were not white. In 2020, for the first time, at least 10 percent of the voters were Latino or Hispanic, and 15 percent of the voters were below age 14. And so what this card is saying is basically that the way that the AF is contextualizing it, right, saying that um, Russian hackers contributed to um, why Trump was voted for. It's basically saying that we have a different demographic of voters today that's different from then, which means that fake news will impact those people differently. All right, thank you so much, Ariel. Um, now, Roger will be cross-exiting Ariella. Um, Roger, um, if you don't mind pulling from our lovely reservoir in the chat, um, we have some spicy cross-ex questions, in my opinion, I think. Um, and um, like I mentioned before, this is our last cross-examination. Um, so there won't be any cross-examinations after any of the rebuttals because we're still in the constructives right now. All right. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take two questions from the chat. I'll start the timer now. Um, so starting with the first one, um, you said that NATO would only target, and I know this was really for the previous speech, but NATO would only target, um, would help uh, with a problem if it was physical. Um, what about the cases of fake news that cause people to act violently? Yeah, so if there were a mass shooting that were caused, um, caused by fake news, first off, one, the affirmative needs to outline an example of that, right? So that we can clash and so that we can discuss it. And two, even if that were the case, the affirmative does not say how adding $1 billion budget to working with NATO will actually prevent people from acting violently or how co strengthening communication among NATO, amongst NATO will prevent anyone from acting violently. And another thing that I would say is that it wouldn't just be Russian hackers who are causing this person to act violently. It could be anyone. Anyone can make a new account on Instagram and say something that's fun, you know, fake or funny or silly. And how the receiving end decides to respond to that is up to them. Thank you. 
Um, and uh, another question. So without the plan, how would we stop Russia from posting fake news? Well, number one, this is a misconception. It's not Russia that's posting the fake news, right? Um, it could be individuals from Russia who are posting the fake news, but um, that would be very similar to someone in the United States who's posting fake news that might cause someone to act violently. And there's not a clear way to kind of restrict that or regulate that. And um, so right now, I think that our current strength in communication definitely helps with that. And by the card that I just read, it's showing that our demographics for voting and the way that news actually affects our elections have changed. All right, those are my two questions. Thanks. All right, thank you so much. Um, so now we will be transitioning into the webinar, which is Walter's speech. Um, and so just a reminder, constructives are a little bit different than rebuttals. Um, so constructives are usually very evidence heavy. Um, they're introducing lots of new arguments for people to kind of see what's the most persuasive and what their opponents have, you know, the least amount of responses for and things like that. Um, and, or, um, sorry, the rebuttals are usually extending previous arguments you've made in the constructive. You're usually not introducing any new evidence or any different new arguments. You're trying to stick kind of what you already had and embellish on it. Um, another cool thing about the one in R before I open up the floor for Walter um, is you get the opportunity to kind of prep during um, cross X. So you get a little extra sneaky prep time. Um, so I would highly recommend using that if you are the one in R. Um, Walter, do you need any more prep? Um, I actually, I, well, I'm going to preface this by saying not the best um, debate conduct uh, because it's, it's generally best practice to not take prep for the one and R, but I do need a little bit of prep. Um, okay, so. no worries, no worries. Um, cool, well. Really, um, for, while Walter's doing that, for those of uh, us who are brand new to debate, very first debate round they're seeing today, can you explain a little bit about what prep time is and what debaters do during prep time? Of course I can. Um, so prep time is a wonderful thing. Um, so each team will be given a certain amount of prep time and it kind of depends on like which division you are in or you know if you're in high school or middle school. Um, but your team is given a certain block of prep time and it's up to you and your partner to decide how you would like to use it. So both of you are given the same amount of prep time and theoretically one of your partners could use all of it. So you want to make sure that you're dividing it and collaborating with your teammate. Um, so another part of prep time is you can use it before speeches. You can use it after speeches. Um, the only time, thing you can't really do with it is use it to interrupt a speech or tack it on to at the end of a speech. So it's usually just for break time. And what you can use prep time for is you can you know, review what your opponent's arguments are, read through your evidence, read through your opponent's evidence, and kind of figure out what you're going to say in the next speech. Um, it's also a good point to touch base with your partner, really making sure you're on the same page. Um, something else I would highlight is you want to make sure that if your opponents are using that prep time, that you're also taking that time to prep, because if one opponent's using prep time, then you, you have that time to prep as well. Um, uh, speaking of debate cadence, as Walter mentioned, um, you do want to make sure that you're not prepping or discussing with your partner or like actively writing out arguments whenever there's just like dead time in the debate. So for example, if your your judge is like getting out their timer, I have a strawberry timer and like taking time to like, you know, do something like that or someone gets to get a drink of water, that's like dead time and it's customary for you to not try to prep like during that except in those designated spots. And that's called stealing prep, um, which sounds very nasty. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions on prep time? Um, and I would some... highly, oh, go ahead, Walter. Oh, I was like, if, if we don't have questions or whenever everybody is ready, I'm good to go, so. Okay, I'll say one more thing. Um, I would highly recommend always using all of your prep time. 
Um, and the reason I recommend that, even if you feel like you don't, it kind of gives a sour impression on a judge if say you're like, mm, I'm not gonna use, I have like three minutes of prep time yet, but I don't feel like I use it. And you stand up and you make a very short speech or it seems like you weren't sure. I think it's always best to try to use it all if you can. And if you happen to run out of it, that's completely okay. You will figure it out, I believe in you. Um, but Walter, <laughs> it's your turn. All right, um, what's the time on this, like two minutes? Correct. Okay. I lied. Uh, it's three minutes. I'm so sorry. It's three minutes. <laughs> okay. Three minutes. <laughs> All righty. Um, yeah. Um, you know, so much to all the other speeches. I'm going to be talking about um, kind of extending my arguments uh, that we've been making. Uh, throughout the debate about the alt causes, the inherency, and the solvency. Um, and then we'll be answering everything that came up in the 2AC as well. Um, but if that is all, then I am good to begin. All right. Uh, first off, on the top of everything, this debate obviously has been a lot about like Russian hackers, when they've been able to uh, cause cyber attacks when they've been able to spread fake news I'd like to remind everybody uh, that the only time that the affirmative has ever been able to prove uh, any cyber attacks happening is through Russian hackers breaking into legitimate news sites that is the only actual cyber attack happening here any other spread people spreading information on social media is not a cyber attack would not trigger any sort of response from NATO um, anything like that. Uh, so anyway, uh, going to go on to the inherency from Baldur in 18 that says NATO is already prepared to fight cyber attacks. This evidence went completely unanswered in the 2AC and thus should be considered as true. Uh, the plan is totally unnecessary because NATO is actually already prepared to fight cyber attacks. Uh, so we just don't need the plan. We don't need the billion dollars. We don't need uh, these creation of teams. We don't need any of that kind of thing. Um, on the alt causes, uh, first, social media. People just share inflammatory things online. NATO has no jurisdiction helping with anything that comes from individuals and needs to come from an actual state entity, which the affirmative has not been able to prove actually happens. For example, someone from Russia who has bad intentions or wants to influence an election can just make an account on American Facebook. Um, that's not a cyber attack. They're just making an account and sharing information that's untrue. Um, nothing like that would ever trigger any response from NATO, even if we were to put in another billion dollars. And it doesn't change the definition of what a cyber attack is. Um, anyway, uh, the second alt cause is journalists uh, or, or social media with journalists. Social media has made it more difficult for journalists to provide good information. Uh, one of the problems is social media itself as an institution and as a way that we receive information. It's just not as good of a way of receiving information as others like the legitimate news sites. Uh, this is entirely separate from Russian hackers. And even if we uh, were able to invest in NATO, it wouldn't stop social media from uh, advancing these inflammatory takes, basically. Um, on solvency, as my partner said in Cross, there's no outline of how a billion dollars to cybersecurity in NATO will go towards stopping fake news. Uh, we said, hey, we'll throw money into the problem. Uh, but there's no outline of how that money actually solves anything. The affirmative needs to prove to us that doing the plan will solve the problem, not just saying, oh, money fixes everything. So we're going to do that. Um, also, most importantly, cyber attacks would need to cause physical harm. We talked about this in Cross a lot, um, but nothing from any of these um, spreading fake news as a cyber attack, breaking into sites does not cause physical harm. So it would not trigger response from NATO. Uh, that is basically the whole argument on solvency that even if we spent all that money with NATO, it wouldn't actually solve anything because none of these cyber attacks will cause physical damage. Thank you so much, Walter. Um, so if I were the one AR- I definitely I need prep. Yeah. <laughs> I would be feeling a little faster. <laughs> so like I mentioned before, um, the block or the negative block is strategically used to pressure the affirmative because they have the advantage of speaking first and last, which is you know, um, empirically what you remember most and what you're most persuaded by. So this 
um, the block will throw out lots of different arguments, lots of different things in the hopes that the 1AR or the first affirmative rebuttal will drop or undercover something. So when I say drop, I just mean that Josh doesn't respond to it. So it's an argument that's made that goes without a response. And you've heard that kind of peppered throughout this debate, but that's all that means when people say you dropped an argument. Um, something important though, that the, the, um, the negative should remember is just because an argument is dropped. That though it is a, sometimes people say a dropped argument is a true argument. It's important you explain why those dropped arguments are important and exactly what they are. Um, anyway, so the 1AR is one of the hardest speeches to give. It's the most time pressed, which just means that you have the least amount of time to respond to the most amount of arguments. So if you're adding it together, the 2NC is three minutes, right? And then the 1AR is just a few minutes. And how long does the 1AR have to respond to those arguments? They only have three minutes. Whereas the rest of the debate, right, there was kind of like a three minute, the three minute ratio. So usually the 1AR will take a lot of prep, but you need to be careful and coordinate with your partner to make sure if you need some prep for the 2AR that you'll still have some time for it. I need like another two minutes and then I'll start. Yeah, you're good, Josh. I was just trying to, I was, I was, I wasn't pressuring you to stop prepping. I'm, I'm thinking about if there's anything helpful I can add. Well, while we're waiting, can some people add in the chat any helpful arguments they might think that, that Josh can throw back in the one air? We'll help him expedite his prep time this way. <laughs> Okay, I don't see any in the chat now, but if I happen to, I will come alive again. <laughs> All right, you know, I could actually prep for a very, very long time because their speeches were really, really good, but I'm just going to go now. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm just going to go line by line. Um, well, not quite line by line. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to address the, the inherent uh, words. The first thing I'm going to do is address the inherency arguments that uh, the negative were, was making and then subsequently reinforced. One being the all, um, one being that we're working with NATO now, uh, one that we're working with NATO now, and there's some reform. The second part I want to get into is the is the harms, and then if I have time, I'll finish addressing the arguments that Ariella made, but I likely won't be able to get to that. All right, so Roger, so they Roger mentioned in the two AC that we were collabing with NATO but we're not collabing anywhere near as much as we need to be collabing in order to make the necessary change that we need to make on top of the $1 billion that doesn't solve everything. Um, it still will allow us to help us hire minds and, and also provide the necessary technology and supports to build these robust um, systems so that we can collaborate and share information more, which is part and share information more, which is the second part of our plan which was not only to have a billion dollars, but to better share information between NATO countries so that we will be more solidified against attacks, um, you know, albeit from Russia, but from any other, from any source that wants to attack us from the outside. Um, so that's that's the, the piece about inherency. And also the newest NATO reform means that like, there still is more to do. There's still more to reform. They're taking, they may be taking steps to, uh, you know, 
do these things, but we, they need much more, including the money, including um, much more cooperation from the United States. The second thing is, is that Russia, they, they say that anyone can create a random, uh, random account and post it onto, and then post information onto websites. And that's how fake news gets spread. But in order for real fake news to get spread, not only do you need to have this random account, but you also need to have a lot of followers and or money to buy followers in order to deal the damage that you're suggesting that we're not, um, that's not being dealt through cyber attacks. Third, um, you say that we can't stop um, information once it gets to our websites, once it gets to the websites, then that information is proliferated throughout everything and we can't do anything. And Roger stated in his 2AC that if we could stop the, the bad information at the source, i.e. coming from Russia, then there wouldn't be information to be posted to the websites in the first place. Um, cyber attacks. Uh, oh, lastly, they said that cyber attacks have to cause physical harm to trigger NATO. NATO, and and that may be true. And there have been certain, there have been some instances of attacks. Uh, the FBI attack that happened in 2020, and then there was um another one that I can't get to that's in a card, but there are instances of attack. But more importantly than that, like even if there isn't physical violence now, that's not to say that if uh, fake, rampant fake news from Russia isn't um, taken care of or isn't dealt with, that it wouldn't lead to violence in the future. And preventing future violence, though may not be part of the NATO uh, scripture now, it could be built in as also another part of us work collaborating with NATO better. So in, um, in short, you should definitely vote for the affirmative because any attempt at dealing with violence is we, we need to take it because right now they're just saying that um, everything is bad and that we're not going to be able to make any change. But we, we are actually, as the affirmative, trying to make change for the better by implementing, by spending money with NATO, by sharing resources and activating other ways of preventing cyber attacks for us, of course, but also for other neighbor, um, NATO countries as well. Vote for me. Um, so you'll see sometimes your judge will have to cut you off. <laughs> so I would recommend being level like Josh was. Um, so now we're going to prep time for the 2NR, um, which is what Ariella will be giving. So the 2NR is a tricky seat. And the reason it's tricky is because you need you're, what you're trying to do is kind of predict what the 2AR is going to be saying, right? Because this is uh, the 2NR is your last chance to speak. It's your last chance to say anything. You won't be able to go, but, but, but. So as the, in the 2NR, you're really trying to think where are you most vulnerable and, you know, what do you think the firm is going to say, which is what you can be doing throughout the whole debate, but especially in the 2NR. So um, I also heard a few words thrown around, and I want to go over the meanings of them really quickly. So, um, what does the line by line mean? Right? Uh, Josh did the line by line. So, all that means is just going by. Um, bye, Harley. Um, thanks for coming. <laughs> um, all that means when you say line by line is just answering or talking about the debate in the order in which the arguments were read. Um, it's very simple, it's just going in order. Um, there's also another word I heard, which is analytic. So there's this concept of evidence-based arguments, right? Where you're all reading evidence and introducing very specific things backed up by authors throughout the debate round. But there's also this thing called analytics. And analytics is basically just um, something you're piecing together logically, and it's not necessarily backed by an evidence source. Um, and I realize this is like a lot of information and like vocab words that you're all being thrown at. Um, but the more times you hear it, the more it'll become familiar and you'll slowly start to internalize it. So if it's overwhelming, that's okay. And if you're picking up right away, that's also okay. Um, Ariella, do you need any more prep time? Um, no. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll just restate my name and everything. Hi, my name is Ariella and I'm debating on the NEG for the BDL. 
and I will be extending all the arguments that my partner made in his last speech, as well as addressing some of the points that Josh made on um, social media, um, fake news, and the actual control that NATO has over social media. And one second. I will start. Okay, now, as outlined by my partner, the affirmative focuses on the wrong thing. Number one, there is an alt cause to the spread of fake news, social media control. Currently, most Americans use social media as a means of communication. Our First Amendment right says that anyone can make an account on Instagram and spread fake news, and the app does not show how the plan of working more with NATO or adding a billion dollars will prevent or stop that. It is social media's job to regulate that, flag certain posts, and fact check major, major news that is trending. And two, the U.S. is already working with NATO on cybersecurity. That's Heath 21 and strengthening its communication. I think something that we've passed over in this debate is that a lot of the evidence on inherency in the affirmative is about the Trump, um, the Trump election and talking about how NATO maybe didn't have the means to stop uh, cybersecurity attacks then in 2016. But we're using evidence from 2021, which shows that we actually do have the ability to do that now, which does not require an allocation of an additional $1 billion. And three, NATO is already prepared to fight cyber attacks. Um, that's the Balder 18 card. However, the spread of fake news is not a cybersecurity problem. It's a direct result of democracy. Free speech allows each citizen to spread fake news and align with those who agree with that news. The planned spending a billion dollars won't stop this fake news from spreading. It won't stop people from talking. And if it does, they need to provide evidence for how allocating an additional $1 billion in funding and strengthening communication within NATO will stop specific instances where someone acts violently because of fake news. And also, when they provide examples from 2016 about fake news, they don't say 100% it was a Russian hacker who did this. They say, first, Russians, there's Russian hacking going on in the United States. And second, that might have contributed to the Trump campaign. If you look specifically at the card, it says it might have. There's no sure fact on that. And four, the plan won't solve the problem. Cybersecurity is important to prevent physical threats and only only and NATO is more likely to respond to cyber attacks that cause physical damage um, or death and that's the Raji 2022 card. Considering all these facts we should continue our efforts to preserve democracy in the best way. Figure out how we can stray away from fake news per my Burns 22 card allowing threats against you know journalists are big problems. It seems that empowering journalists and giving them more credibility um, will prevent the issue that's outlined in the 1AC, as well as making sure that these um, so that social media is able to regulate and flag fake news posts on their websites. Thank you, Ariella. So now we are going into prep for the last, which is the 2AR or the second affirmative rebuttal, which Walt, or which Roger will be given. And um, the 2AR uh, is nice <laughs> in that, like before we were saying the 2NR doesn't have another chance to speak, you have to be projective and it's kind of hard to be negative. The 2AR get to say whatever they'd like without a response. Um, so you'll hear this term sometimes that the 2AR will lie, steal and, lie cheat, and steal <laughs> um, to win. Um, I wouldn't recommend lying or cheating, but um, you can maybe get away with being a little bit more expansive on your arguments and maybe introducing newer things that maybe weren't expanded as, uh, upon as well earlier on in the debate. Um, but the two ARs should be very persuasive. Roger, do you need more time? Um, Sorry, what was that? I'm all set. Thanks. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so I'm going to 
um, give a quick roadmap here. So I'm going to respond to uh, all the points that I think were made in the, the 2M um, and then try and simplify this debate to really explain why you all as the judges in this round should uh, vote for the affirmative. Um, so I, the order will be um, the alternative causes of fake news, um, how the money is important, and the physical attacks, uh, and then journalism. All right, here we go. So um, on the first point about social media control and limiting freedom of speech in the First Amendment, um, there are things that can be done from a social media perspective, right? Money can go a long way to helping social media companies research things like IP addresses to know where bad actors um, are accessing social media from and uh, provide more information to social media companies to block uh, potential bad actors who aren't trying to help um, things going on in the United States. So that's specifically something that money can do. Um, the second point about freedom of speech uh, being important is one I wholeheartedly agree with. I just don't agree that Russian citizens have uh, an entitlement to the freedom of speech in the United States. Um, I think that the Constitution protects freedom of speech for US citizens. Um, on to point number three, um, the money helps with training and technology. And the negative points have multiple times that we've talked about, that we dropped this argument about the money. Well, in the 1NC, there was a question about, you know, what the plan does differently. In the 2AC, I directly answer by saying that the plan adds money. This is something new. In the negative block, right? they ask for a specific thing that the money does. And in the 1AR, my partner, Josh, directly responds saying that money offers training and technology. So we respond at every point throughout the debate. We can't be held accountable for something uh, that was not argued by the negative yet. So to reiterate that point, money helps hire more people. It helps with training in cybersecurity. It helps with improving technology to prevent cyber attacks. Uh, on to point number four about attacks being physical only. Um, so our FBI card, and this is actually a small mistake from Josh, this FBI attack happened in 2022, right? This is very, very, very recent, right? So this is showing that violent physical attacks are still happening as a result of fake news. Um, to further this point, five years ago or six years ago now for the 2016 election is not enough time to fully develop a cyber uh, defense that would prevent future attacks. NATO might think, someone from NATO might think that they are safe. They're probably just projecting. More money can help. Better planning can help. Working together and sharing data can help. Finally, journalism is important, um, but it's not as important um, if we cannot stop all the fake news coming out of Russia. Journalism can only do so much, and journalism would be amplified and improved greatly if it didn't have to compete against Russian fake news. We argue that our plan, investing money and resources, can at least help marginally improve the situation and reduce fake news for people who don't have the U.S.'s best interest in mind coming from Russia. Thanks. Thank you very much to all of our debaters. Can we have, a, I don't know, however you interact via Zoom to congratulate people. Um, but I'm going to add all of our debaters in the spotlight again. Um, and myself, I guess. Um, so um, a couple of things before we kind of jump into the rest of the thing. Um, so typically after the end of the debate round, all of the opponents will shake hands with one another and congratulate each other or whatever is COVID safe slash whatever these days. Um, and typically at the end of your debate round, <laughs> and thank you for acting that out, um, your judge will take a step back and review their notes and kind of decide who won the debate. And part of that is doing a, they'll fill out a thing called a RFD or a reason for decision. So their reason for decision will be why they think that you won or lost the debate round. So they'll also fill out other things on the ballot, like your speaker points and things like that, which I'm not going to explain right now. But the reason for decision is very important because it gives you insight as to what the judge found persuasive or not. Um, and usually we'll have reason for decision to have three sentences at minimum. It'll explain 
um, what the ask strongest arguments were, what the next strongest arguments were, and then there'll be a sentence that compares and contrasts those two arguments on why they thought one one versus the other. So um, all of you will actually be partaking as judges, as Roger and team alluded to. Um, so Roger, can you help me open the poll? I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> but um, yes. to get your, thank you. sorry, what? So we actually didn't put a poll together. We decided to just do um, votes in the chat. Okay. I, I actually um, have a poll I can put in if it's easier because right. it compiles it. But That, that would be good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Marisa. <laughs> um, so to kind of get you prepared and in the mindset of a judge, you should review your notes and think about a couple of key questions. So first, you know, do you think the world of the affirmative is better than a world without the affirmative? Um, do you think that the plan can actually solve some of the harms that they lay out? Do you think that there's a chance the affirmative can make the world worse? Um, do you think that the plan is needed? Um, of course, there can be other questions you might have that you might think are more or less important than those questions, but those are just some things to kind of get you thinking. 